Our lesson today is on St. Luke the Evangelist. He is recognized by every single church of Christianity. The Anglicans, the Catholics, the Lutherans, every single congregation. Thus, we recognize him, him today. The early church fathers ascribed to St. Luke authorship of both the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles, which would mean Luke contributed over a quarter of the text of the New Testament, 27.3%, more than any other author. Prominent figures in early Christianity, such as Jerome and Eusebius, later reaffirmed his authorship. Luke was a Greek physician who lived in the Greek city of Antioch in ancient Syria. The theolog theology of Luke and Acts points to a Gentile Christian writing for a Gentile audience, although he concludes that it is more plausible that Luke and Acts is directed towards a community made up of both Jewish and Gentile Christians because there is a stress on the scriptural roots of the Gentile mission. Well, he does himself, well, he does himself exclude himself from those who were eyewitnesses to Jesus' ministry. Luke repeatedly uses the word we in describing the Pauline missions in Acts of the Apostles, indicating that he was personally there at those times. There is similar evidence that Luke resided in Troas, the province which included the ruins of ancient Tron, Troy, in that he writes in Acts in the third person about Paul and his travels until they get to Troas, where he switches to the first person plural. The we sections of Acts continues until the group reaches Philippi, when he, his writing continues back into the third person. This change happens again when the group returns to Philippi. There are three we sections in Acts, all following this rule. Luke never stated, however, that he lived in Troas, and this is the only evidence that he did. Luke's presence in Rome with the Apostle Paul near the end of Paul's life was attested to by the Paul's letter in 2 Timothy 4.11, which we just read. Only Luke is with me. In the last chapter of Book of Acts, widely attributed to Luke, there are several accounts in the first person also affirming Luke's presence in Rome, including Acts 28, 16, quote, When we came to Rome, close quote, according to some accounts in which Luke also contributed to the authorship of the epistle to the Hebrews. Luke died at the age of 84 in Boeotia, according to the fairly early and widespread tradition. According to Nicophorus, Callistos, Xenopoulos, you try saying that quickly, Greek historian of the 14th century, and many others, Luke's tomb was originally located in Thebes, whence his relics were transferred to Christinoble, Christantinople, God, I hate Greek, in the year of 357. Many scholars understood understood Luke's works, Luke and Acts, in the tradition of Greek histo histoiog histoiography. The preface of the Gospel of Luke, drawing on historical, historical investigation, identified the work to the readers as belonging to the genre as histo history. This is what happens when you copy it from four different sources. Based on his accurate description of towns, cities, and islands, 
as well as correctly naming various official titles. The archaeologist Sir William Ramsey wrote that Luke is a historian of the first rank. Not merely are his statements of fact trustworthy, he should be placed among the very greatest of historians. But he wasn't writing a historical treatise, but a theological document of the spiritual events which he was witness to. But thus you have angels and demons that would not be allowed in a historical document, but are allowed in a spiritual witness presentation. For Luke's purpose is to tell what happened and to persuade those unbelievers to the cause, not a process or a problem of a historian. The Roman Catholic Church and all other major denominations venerate him as St. Luke the Evangelist and as a patron saint of artists, physicians, bachelors, surgeons, students, and butchers. <laughs> Sorry. His feast day takes place today on 18 October. I wish you all peace.